Yes. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Anthony Bly. I'm a soil specialist with SDSU Extension. I um, apologize for my voice today. Um, I lost it yesterday afternoon and been working all morning to get it back. So <clears throat> what I will be discussing today is a, a future project um, that we're, we're calling the National Assessment of, of the Relationship Between Swine Manure and Soil Health. Uh, this study is financially supported by the National Pork Board, as was the previous literature review. Uh, from that literature review, literature review it, was, it was really <clears throat> determined that we needed um, a more comprehensive uh, study around, around uh, the pork growing regions of, of our country. So I'd also like to introduce to you uh, Dr. John McMain. He will be the primary investigator of this project. Um, he is in our um, uh, he is our leader of our mesonet system um, uh, water resources and the water institute in in South Dakota and a, an assistant professor. Uh, the co PI of the study is our swine specialist, Dr. Robert Toller. Uh, currently, he's serving as the interim department head and and doing many other things as well. So Bob is really busy these days. And also Sarah Bowder is a co-PI, which uh, currently is our, our forage field specialist, which previously she was an agronomy field specialist. So the main reasons for the project, as I discussed, were uh, current research that focuses on swine manure and soil health is, is not comprehensive um, or can be put together easily. Um, Linda did a great job on her postdoc of doing with what they had. Uh, very interesting. And there, you know, it's 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 not unified work, which is important. And so the need for more, more work um, was identified. Not that the work had, that has been done has it isn't good or not good enough, but uh, there's a lot of holes in that in that information that we want to kind of fill in. Um, there was also identified a need um, to be producer-led or producer-influenced, and that's how the National Pork Board um, wanted this to be conducted. So what we did is we we wrote up a set of protocols and, and had several meetings with the National Pork Board along with some state pork board input as well. And so what we feel is a result of that is we come up with a unified effort um, to ensure that our infield treatments and sampling protocols are similar from state to state. And um, what, at the same time, there is, there is local um, control based upon the nutrient recommendations for the crop, for the corn crop in each state. So it is a multi-state effort. Um, I did get up a uh, map of the United States there, and I've highlighted each state where there will be at least one project. A couple of the states have have, have chosen to probably have two uh, projects. Um, so we're kind of excited about that. It will be a continuous uh, corn study, uh, five years in length. Um, we're looking for sites with little or previous uh, manure application on these sites. Um, of course, an RCB uh, research design with four replications. We'll be looking at fairly large plots, uh, 60 to 80 feet in width and, and at least a couple hundred feet long, uh, really to um, focus on field scale equipment uh, used on these plots. Uh, another highlight I'd like to show is the soil samples and the corn yields, you know, will be taken you know, near the center of these plots. So the plot will will include borders as well as the research area all in all in one. Uh, we'll be obtaining soil samples and corn yields from that area. Um, uh, manure and fertilizer application rates will be based on the nitrogen needs of, of corn. Uh, however, uh, we can't, uh, we really want to honor each state's um, concentrated animal feeding operation um, regulations. And so at some point, maybe a pea-based 
um, approach will have to be taken and then additional nitrogen would probably have to be applied. But each one of those will be taken on a case-by-case -case, uh, situation. And then in one of our, or in the fall applied manure treatments, um, nitropyrin will be added to the manure to, to uh, slow down that mineralization of any, of any nitrogen. Um, some of those states don't do fall applications. So um, they'll be doing a spring application and in those, in those sites, we will not be um, applying any nitropyrin. So we're really focusing on the, the deep pits uh, in swine production under barns, uh, you know, any, any tank and, and not lagoons. So more concentrated uh, nutrient situation. The treatments that, that we uh, uh, settled on with, with all the discussions that I mentioned with the boards um, resulted in this. Uh, the first treatment will be a commercial fertilizer applied in the spring according to the nutrient needs of, of corn, uh, which, which come from the recommendations provided by the local land grant university. The second treatment will be swine manure applied according to the state's CAFO regulations. And, and some of those states um, do have fall applications and then some are spring. So depending upon uh, what that is, uh, will really dictate whether the nitropyrin will be added as a nitrogen mineralization inhibitor. Uh, treatment two uh, will not receive any starter fertilizer application. So treatment three is the same as treatment two, but will receive a starter fertilizer application. So these treatments were, we worked, we worked a a lot on these treatments because we we started this discussion now a year ago and we had several meetings um, last spring and over the summer uh, with with various members of the pork board and state boards um, to gather input and really as a compromise between academia and pork producers. And so I think this brings a really good consensus uh, that we all agreed upon and uh, of course, protocols are never perfect, as as we learned uh, from Linda's presentation. So, so it's 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 the compromise, and I think um, all parties are happy with with how it's turning out. Of course, there's going to be a lot of samples, and I did not put up uh, what those individual samples are going to be because the list is 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 very long. And I, I don't want anybody to focus on this or that or, or anything like that, but we'll be measuring standard nutrients, of course, from the soil from the beginning to the end. And, and then, of course, the soil health parameters, which include physical, biological, and, and chemical properties. The manure will be sampled as well. Uh, we'll look at the nutrient content of the manure for sure to help us guide us, guide the application, and also the carbon content, which is which has not typically been done uh, in the past, but it's important to measure that and then the changes that would occur in the soil. So with that, I'm, I'm done. I know that was really short and sweet, but it's a new project that we're really excited about. And um, uh, it's gonna run for five years and uh, hopefully it'll bring some good, some good conclusions for the swine industry. And with that, my voice is falling apart again, so thank you.